What What did you make? I've not sp never spoke to you about it. What do you make of that first 10, 15 minutes? The, the same as you. I just couldn't believe it was happening. I've ne I'd never seen the centre out. Was it Torre? Went and PK. PK, yeah. They were like two yards from the byline yeah. outside the box. Yeah. It was incredible. In this next clip, Paul Scholes and Gary Neville and Roy Keane talk about the 2009 Champions League final and about how good that Barcelona team were, considering they were playing against the greatest Manchester United team of all time. Kind of. I often think about that particular final as being a turning point in modern day football because that was the point where this Pep Guardiola style really started and came into its own because from there not only did Barcelona become the greatest team of its generation and but Spain obviously started to dominate international football Pep Guardiola would eventually go to Manchester City and dominate the Premier League with Manchester City um, and using the same tactics basically but I often wonder what would the world of football be like if Manchester United had won that game um, and I often think that Barcelona were very lucky that they won that game with the benefit of hindsight. But before I go into that, here's Paul, here's Gary and here's Roy talking about that night in 2009. Going back to you played in the 2008 game against Barcelona. <sighs> yeah. And you scored, obviously. And then do you play in the 2009 final against Barcelona where... So you sub. What did you... That was Wembley? No, the one at Rome. Rome. Yeah. So the first 15 minutes of that game, which I think is the first time I've ever seen the six, the, 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 the centre-backs go back to yeah. that level. I've never seen it before in my life. Like, what the hell is that? What, what did you make... I've not I never spoke to you about it. What did you make of that first 10, 15 minutes? The, the same as you. I just couldn't believe it was happening. I've, ne I've never seen the centre out. Was it Torre? Went and PK. PK, yeah. They were like two yards from the byline yeah. outside the box. Yeah. It was incredible. But I, thought, I, I thought, actually thought that game the first 10 minutes we were all right. No, I thought we were, we were encouraged by you. We, yeah, You absolutely. were delighted you were doing yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, we, were, we, we had a couple of chances. We had a couple of chances, yeah, the first I know, but even minutes. when they first started, we... Yeah, thinking, hey, what's yeah. this? What the hell is yeah. that? No, but go on. Open. So, yeah. you had, so you had, yeah, you had a couple of chances. You had a couple yeah. of chances. No, Cara, never seen not, anything like that. Not to that level in that game. I'd never no. seen it. To the, even in the videos we'd watched, never to two yards off the byline. So even at that level, they're trying it. He almost said, this is my moment to almost crown myself in terms of... like It was, wasn't it? Who said that? No, it, it, when you're watching the game and you, when you look back now, mm. first 10, 15 minutes, you're like, this is madness, yeah. this is mayhem, they're going to get caught and we actually nearly had two goals. Yeah, that's what Cristiano on scored, didn't he? And then... Was it as well? But you remember going into that game, we thought, or oh, the talk of it was that we're going to overpower him. Over, because he had a couple of players missing, I think Henri was struggling. Iniesta Yaya, was struggling. Iniesta was struggling, Yaya Torre, centre-half, PK, you never thought, thought yeah. was that physical. Yeah. And for 10 minutes, so yeah, we, we've got a chance here. But after that, I don't think we kicked the ball. So what was it? What's the, so when they're doing Honestly, it that deep, incredible. James, are they trying to he's trying to make the pitch as big as, as big as possible? That's what he does. So so then suck, United don't. So, because so yeah. United don't know that's happening. So what did you do? Did you go no. and get them? We knew they play out. We never knew they were going to take the level of risk of the goalkeeper from the six yard, but passing it backwards. You well, would think it's risk, though. No, no. But my point is though, we even in the build up to the game, we weren't expecting that level of sort of. Like do you think he's making the pitch bigger? And yeah. that, that'll be his idea, so it'll be longer distances for you to press. So ultimately, it worked for him, of course. Oh, absolutely, yeah. it worked for him. And from that moment, I had to think that was, the, it, that was when that great Barcelona team, which probably people see as the greatest team of all time, was born. That night, probably. Because the night, the year before, but obviously, we Again, we, Champions we, we, we go back to... Oh, but they, they're the players, yeah. Yeah. They're the so players to do it. Yeah. Yeah. They're the players <laughs> to do that and have the belief. So when you had a couple of chances, everyone said, no, we're still going to... We're also going to pass I'm them to think, why would they do that? But it's obvious to open up the middle of the pitch, wasn't it? Because you had the three in there. Of course. Chavi in the That's what the they always game. want, that extra man and in the The amount of time the keeper Overlord. just <laughs> shipped it into Messi at times. Yeah. So there's four or five of them in there anyway. Yeah. So it just opens everything up, doesn't it? It's hard to overpower too when you can't get near them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we couldn't. We didn't. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Barcelona won that game 2-0, I believe. I think Samuel Eto'o scored and Lionel Messi scored a header against the greatest defensive partnership in Premier League history, who were two feet taller than him. And fair enough, they won. And they will go on to be the great team that they were. And don't get me wrong, that Barcelona team were absolutely world-class. And Lionel Messi is the greatest footballer that ever lived, even better than Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't necessarily want to take anything away from that 
team. However, what I will say is they were lucky because at that level, and make no mistake, the Champions League final is the pinnacle of club football in the world, right? So at the highest level of any sport, it's the tiny details that make the difference. Now it was Xavi and Iniesta that won that game for Barcelona. And as they talk about in the clip, they had Xavi, Iniesta, and Busquets in the middle of the park. So they were running the show. Um, we didn't have two of our best midfielders who tactically would have made the difference in that particular game. I mean, our midfield for that 2009 final was actually quite weak looking back. It was um, Carrick, Giggs and Anderson. And they were up against arguably the greatest midfield partnership of all time in Xavi, Iniesta and Busquets. Manchester United didn't have a chance in that game because, I mean, Anderson just wasn't at that level. He had lungs and he was, he had a lot of energy, but I, I don't really recall Anderson being that great. I don't remember him being a good tackler. He did score a lot of goals and I don't recall him scoring, or should I say, um, creating a lot of chances and making a lot of assists. Giggs is, was still a good player, but he didn't have any legs. And uh, Carrick was still a good player. Carrick was fine. Carrick was fine. Although he wasn't the dynamic midfielder that Manchester United needed in that game to counter the intricacies of Xavi, Iniesta and Busquets. Now, we did have the players to have been able to counter that midfield. And those players were Owen Hargreaves and Darren Fletcher. I had one, if not both of those players played in that final that night, that game would have been different. Because Darren Fletcher got um, suspended for being sent off in the semi-final against Arsenal. And uh, when he made a fantastic challenge on Robin Van Persie, um, which was given as a penalty. Now, had VAR been around at that time, that red card would have been overturned and that penalty would not have happened. Um, and Owen Hargreaves, unfortunately, had bad knees. So, I mean, these things happen. But I would argue, if that Manchester United team um, was at full strength and they were playing that Barcelona team at full strength, because the only players that they were missing that particular evening were Danny Alves. And Danny Alves, probably the best right back of all time. However, for that particular match, the midfield was going to decide the game and he did decide the game. We didn't have the midfield to compete on the night. But if we'd been at full strength, Owen Hargreaves and Darren Fletcher would have gotten the ball off Xavi and Iniesta. They would have done enough for it to perhaps turn the tables because we were going into that match full of confidence and they were just coming into their own, that particular team. So, and I mean, let's not forget that Barcelona team should not have been in the final in the first place because Chelsea in the semi-final had about 25 penalties that were not given. And I don't know, maybe it was something to do with Michel Platini not wanting back-to-back -back all English Champions League finals because we know he didn't like English football and we know that he was a bit corrupt as was proven so but anyway look listen it's all what ifs and, and, and that all that kind of thing we were a great side we beat that Barcelona team the year before in 2008 when we were at full strength um, but they got us on that particular day and yeah, he, all the fine margins make all the difference at top level sport. But each team or individual needs a little bit of luck at that level too. And unfortunately for Manchester United, we didn't have the luck at the time. Whereas Barcelona did. And they won the game. I like to think about what might have happened if we had won the game. So that would have been two in a row, Champions League wise. I fancy we'd have kept Ronaldo. Uh, for, a, for one more season after that I think Ferguson would have said to him um, stick around for one more year let's go for three in a row and I think he would have done um, we were still quite good the year after 
um, when Rooney was the main man, um, we just didn't have enough firepower after Tevez and Ronaldo leaving. But I fancy both of those players would have stayed on for another year um, if we'd won this particular game. And we might have gone on to four in a row because we got to the 2011 final anyway, um, where we were beaten again by this particular Barcelona side. And in that particular game, I don't have any complaints. We were well beaten. So there's, there's no sort of qualms from the big D on that front. But the 2009 final, I, I always think back to that one. Had we been at full strength, perhaps world football would have been thinking about how great that particularly United era was um, for football. And perhaps we wouldn't have had all this tick attack of shit that we have to endure now. Um, but who knows, maybe it was destiny. Um, but anyway, what do you guys think? Did Manchester United have a chance if we had Fletcher and Owen Hargreaves playing in that game? They were two world-class class players at the time. Um, I ta ideal, ideal tactically for that match. Great tacklers, um, could easily dominate a midfield. They had the lungs to chase after Xavi and Iniesta. No problem, all day long. Um, but that's just my opinion. But what do you guys think? Thoughts in the comments, please. Thoughts in the comments.